aging skin specialist and a speaker of skin essentials Maria or Maria Shidi is going to link up with us in just a few moments time so if you're feeling a little bit wrinkly and crinkly like yours truly join the queue uh, help is at hand Give us a call on that number now. Orla taking your calls or use that text line as I'm joined by Mariga Sheedy. And Mariga, I hope I pronounced the first name right, have I? Yes, yes, you have indeed. Good morning, Go. Alan. And good morning to your listeners. I woke up this morning and I looked at the mirror and I saw a few more lines, Mariga. Can you help me and people like me? What are you going to do? What can you advise us in regards anti-aging and our skin? Well, the first thing I would advise you to is stay away from, from the mirror and in particular, <laughs> magnifying mirrors. <laughs> They're not our friends. Um, yeah. Yes, it's the short answer. Of course, we can help any of that. And specifically today, I think we wanted to have a chat about sunscreen. And yes. that really is the number one anti-wrinkles, anti-aging product to have in your arsenal. We have loads of fancy treatments that we can do. We have lots of terrific ingredients to keep your skin young and radiant. But sunscreen is, of course, the number one for yeah. everybody. Right, now this is very interesting because I've heard this mentioned and it wasn't, it wasn't just somebody like yourself who's a skin specialist but a medical person mentioned it to me as well that wearing sunscreen in winter is advisable. Is that true? Absolutely. What I like to tell people is if there is enough light to read a book by, you have to have sunscreen on you. Um, there's a kind of a, an old-fashioned saying, I suppose, that you wear sunscreen in this country from March to October. And certainly you want to up your game between March and October, right. but you need to have it on. It's not the heat of the sun that uh, damages your skin on its own. Sunlight causes skin damage. Uh, uh, what, what factor would you recommend? And because, I mean, indoors, for example, if you're reading a book at late at night by the lamplight, you need to have sun cream on there. Ah, no, you're safe enough. <laughs> Vampires need not yeah. Um You are safe enough inside, yes, at night time. But even if you're inside, like a lot of us are now, I think the best thing to do is just use your sunscreen in the morning, just like your daily moisturiser. Use it as your daily moisturiser. So then when you pop out to the shop or you go out for your, your bit of exercise, you're already covered. So anywhere that's exposed to the sun so don't forget to be doing your face do your ears neck chest hands and if you're getting a little light on top don't forget to do the scalp as well all right now the requirements are they the same for men women and children because i suppose we're in the various factors then what do you suggest yes, yes it's the same for everybody i always recommend a factor 30 um because that's going to give us about 95 percent filtering of uva uvb People do sometimes choose to go stronger. You'll see a factor 50 or even sometimes 100. And I think that you're into a kind of a false sense of security there. Like you're going to think naturally enough that a factor 50 is going to give you nearly double the, the protection of a factor 30. Yes. But in fact, it's not. So if we go that back to that percentage of 95% from the factor 30, you've gone up to about 97.5% with the factor 50. But I think psychologically it can give you that false sense of security so for that reason i recommend a factor 30 right. and yes for men women and children we all have the same skin and susceptibilities and vulnerabilities to sun exposure okay. so there is no difference as far as the protection goes dark circles around your eyes a comment in from a morning mix sister can you help them please yeah, so um, apart from outside of sunscreen and again, anything that you are susceptible to and some of us will have different things like breakouts or red veins or again, the dark circles under the eyes. Um, sunscreen will always help because UV exposure makes everything worse. But with particularly the dark circles under the eyes, if it's not just from being tired, which, you know, trying to get better sleep is the answer there, very often that's either hereditary or medical right. and neither of those issues of course are going to be addressed by um skincare okay. so that is find out where it's from first my, my granny god be good to you used to always say you need a good night's sleep to get rid of the bags under your eyes but was the granny oh, right? She was right was she? absolutely right granny, yes if grannies are always from, right yeah. grannies knew what they were talking about if you suffer from puffy under eyes yeah there's some really simple things Getting a good night's sleep, of course, a higher pillow to help drainage um, down from the face, to help gravity there at night. Yeah. Um, 
cucumber slices back to, to the old fashioned things, they will help temporarily. Yeah. But of course, if they're constant, we can do some skin tightening to, to sort that out for you. Uh, Mary's in Gory. Her granddaughter was diagnosed with melanoma and she has to wear sun cream six months of the year under her makeup and stay out of the sun altogether. Which brings me on to my next question about makeup and sun cream. If you wear makeup with uh, sun protection, do you need a separate product? Absolutely, you do. And it's great that if you're adding more with your makeup, but if you think about how much sunscreen we have to use, now just talking about the face and neck to keep it sort of simple for the makeup wearing question. Um, you're going to need about a half teaspoon and there's no way that you're going to put half a teaspoon of foundation on although I have seen some that do yeah. <laughs> but you're not going to get enough in a normal application of foundation to give you a full spectrum protection yeah. Um, yeah. and we, we really do have um, quite a high instance of melanoma and other skin cancers in this country which is um, a, a huge reason to just use your sunscreen every day make it part of your daily yeah. um, personal grooming. The, the sale of sunscreen in County Wexford is going to go up by <laughs> it'll be like the bread with the start of the pandemic Pandemic will be gone into short supply if we're not careful. You read about oh, God, I hope so. <laughs> you hope so. <laughs> yeah, you read about chemical or mineral sunscreen, Mariga. What's the difference? Does it matter? Yeah. No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. Your skin doesn't mind. Um, the word chemical gets an awful bashing and really for, for no reason um, everything as you know is a chemical water H2O is a chemical so sunscreen can be used either way a chemical sunscreen works the ingredients absorb uh, a lot of the harmful UV rays and um, process them before they can do damage in your skin yeah. a mineral sunscreen which is also called a physical sunscreen so that's one and the same thing they uh, scatter light they reflect it back so they scatter the UV rays off the surface of your skin. Yeah. So either is perfectly acceptable and a blend of both as well is acceptable. You never wore it before. Is it too late to start? Never. With anything to do with your health or beauty, never too late to start. Um, but I would caution everybody, particularly for those of us of a certain vintage for whom if we had sunscreen at all, it was uh, at the beach as if the sun couldn't get you anywhere else. Yeah. So for it's definitely not too late to start. You can always slow down further damage, but the damage is very often done from early light. So even if you've been very good with your sunscreen, even if you've never worn sunscreen, yeah. you keep an eye on all lesions and it is a very, very good idea to get um, anything uh, that changes, get it checked. Great advice. We'll be talking to you again soon, no doubt. A lot of reaction on our text line as well. Final question for the moment, uh, Mariga, is we know the importance of vitamin D, especially now with COVID, but will wearing sunscreen prevent us getting vitamin D from the sun? That's an interesting this, this, one, is is a, this is a big debate. Yeah, yeah. This is, now, I don't like to stray outside of my scope, Alan. Um, cosmetic skincare and the appearance of the skin is, is what I do, and I'm not a medical person. However, um, the yeah. advice seems to be, yeah. and what I do myself to, to get around this, is a little few minutes of sun is enough, of weak sun is enough, as I understand it. Yeah. So in the morning, but maybe before you apply your sunscreen all over, have a little ponder around your yard or your balcony or your garden before the sun is strong. Bring your cup of tea or coffee out. Yeah. and that will be enough vitamin D but always with these questions it is best of course to go back to your doctor I expect to be less wrinkly when next I'm speaking to you after all that good advice today look we don't give out phone numbers <laughs> or anything but, but you obviously have a, a website if people want to check out more about you Mariga what is your website? Yes if people want to check it out or want to send any questions directly you can contact us to our website which is skinessentialsbymariga.com and that is spelled M-A-R-I-G-A because people will ask. So Skin Essentials by Mariga.com. We're located in Westford. Of course, we're not open right now, but we are online to take your questions. Lovely to talk to you. Enjoy that. Stay well, Mariga. Thanks for taking some call at the call this morning and giving us great advice. Thank you, Alan. Enjoy that nice day. Stay <laughs> Bye bye now. That was Mariga Shigidi, or Shidi, I should say, Mariga Shidi, uh, anti aging skin specialist and speaker at Skin Essentials.